Good afternoon. Welcome to Regional Distance Learning Clinical Seminar Series. Today's topic is palliative care of, for adults and children with HIV and speaker Dr. Jasleen Kaur. Dr. Jasleen is the ART Medical Officer at PGA Chandigarh. She has completed her MBBS from MGM Medical College and Hospital and worked as a house, house surgeon in the pediatric department. She has served as the project director in NIH project on NeuroAIDS. She has successfully completed University of Washington course on clinical management of HIV and leadership and management in health. Now I request Dr. Jasleen to start the session. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the session on palliative care for adults and children. We as a doctor treat a patient so that he becomes disease free. Some diseases are chronic manageable and some diseases are in later stage becomes unmanageable. For example, malignancies. Here the palliative care comes into picture. Palliative care is a vast topic which includes many aspects. Palliative care in this session we will be discussing palliative care in HIV patients, management of their pain, end of life care, palliative care in children and home based care. So when we do not have a proper cure to a disease, the interventional steps we take to support the patient is called the palliative care. ART is very effective, but we come across some patients in which the drugs are not responding because of their adherence issues, their other uh, in, uh, like drug is not responding or some other issues. Their viral loads are becoming high and slowly the opportunistic infections start coming into picture and slowly the disease is also progressing. Palliative care improve the quality of life of the patient and the family member. The family member here could be spouse, the patient's parents, could be their children. So the improvement in the quality of life from that life-threatening illness by prevention and relieving the suffering and how we do it is by early assessment and treating the pain and other problems like physical, psychosocial and spiritual. So palliative care extends beyond the life of this patient like the not only the patient is suffering here the caregiver is also suffering. As you see in this uh, picture, the continuum of care, the green part is the curative care, the disease specific restorative care, and the blue part is palliative care, the supportive or the symptom oriented care. The day one, when a patient comes to our ART center, we always explain that it is a chronic manageable disease. If you take medicine regularly, then you will be symptom free and you can live a healthier life. So the at the point one, day one, we start with the counseling. At the time of testing, there is counseling. At the start of the ART, there is counseling. So we are counseling. We have counselors at our ART center to counsel these patients counsel as per the need of the patient, what issues are making him not taking the medicine, what issues are there, if the drug is uh, giving him to some toxic effects, if the drug is not suiting him, uh, like he or she can be having rash. So we counsel them to come back so that we can relieve of the, the patient from th all those symptoms so that he or she can take good care of themselves. So the counseling starts at the day one. And as the time progresses, 
slowly and slowly as you see the index of palliative care becomes higher if the person is with the illness say the caregivers or the family members we counsel the patient as well as to the caregivers also so that beyond the their ill uh, the illness of the caregiver goes beyond because uh, the, the last graph is bewilderment where the family members are suffering because they have seen the patient going through all the disease progression and so they also need counseling we need to support the caregiver also uh, palliative care in hiv it should be family and patient centric optimize it optimizes the quality of life by active participation prevention and treatment of the suffering it involves interdisciplinary team approach throughout the continuum of illness placing critical importance on the building of respectful and trusting relationships it addresses the physical intellectual emotional and social and spiritual needs we for uh, for every patient we cannot make a standard program of care we have to make a tailored made specific like if the patient is having certain opportunistic infection treat the patient if patient is saying that he is having such and such problem listen to the patient uh, then uh, treat the patient accordingly the availability of art and palliative care has made hiv a chronic manageable disease uh, it's not only the pain management which includes uh, in the palliative care but there are so many other aspects to it components of palliative care here physical suffering that is pain the worst part in any disease condition is pain if we relieve the pain half of the work of palliative care is done so there are symptomatic managements also like if the patient is having any symptomatic condition of nausea vomiting or a, then if you treat the patient accordingly as per the symptoms the symptomatic management is there then comes the nutritional component if the patient is not taking food well uh, patient doesn't uh, because of the drugs he is having some issues like food is not tasty or he doesn't feel like taking food because he feel this is the end of my life so i am not i don't want to have food so nutritional def deficiency diseases will also pour in along with the disease so we have to supplement the patient with the multivitamins and other according as per the need psychosocial support also should be there spiritual support in some uh, patients if they follow some religious leader or a, a guru or uh, they follow some puja then they uh, should be uh, all these issues should be addressed and they should be given the spiritual support end of life care and bewilderment counseling should be there management of pain so as i told you the if the pain issue is taken care of then half of the palliative care is done so here is assessment of the pain is go by what the patient says listen to the patient if he or she says it's hurting that means it is hurting believe the patient determine the severity the site the nature of the pain whether the pain is like bony pain there's something pricking kind of a pain muscle spasm the colicky kind of a pain shooting nerve pain the throbbing pain the tingling pain just determine the site where the pain is like and according to the nature assess what could it be if there is an infection like an abscess if abscess is there you drain out the abscess uh, 
pus from the abscess the pain is relieved and the patient will say yes ma'am this pain is, is gone if the patient is having oral candida and he is saying it's paining inside my mouth you just uh, start with fluconazole and the therapy uh, like candida gel he or she will feel pain free while eating the food so the severity of the pain can be graded this is the pqrst characteristic in pain assessment here the we are two p's palliative and the provocative factor which make uh, you make your pain better and what factors make the pain worse just ask this question then there is quality what kind uh, the quality of q is for quality of pain what exactly is it like whether it is a, as i already discussed the bony pain or the spasmodic colicky and radiation r r is for radiation whether it spread anywhere like in sciatica it moves from backwards sixth is the uh, this severity s is for severity that means whether it is hampering your daily life how severe is it whether you can work with this pain or how much does it affect your life that how are you bedridden because of this pain or you can go out and do your work t is for the temporal factor is it there that all the time or does it come and go is it worse at any particular time of the day or night like uh, early morning stiffness is there in arthritis and as the day progresses the pain is not there so we have to ask the patient whether the uh, whether it is time bounded pain or it is throughout the day various scales of for the pain assessment like the uh, descriptive scale numeric scale visual analog scale percentage scale coin scale face scale we uh, next is the uh, visual analog scale this is uh, like face scale F left is the smiley face and towards the last right side this is a crying face so if a patient he doesn't understand how to describe his pain you can ask this is a smiley face with like zero scale you are not hurt and the most worrisome face is the last one whether it's unbearable pain and similarly he or she can do by uh, the wrist uh, the hand method like if the hand is folded it's zero scale and if the full hand is uh, you can see uh, all the five fingers then it hurts a lot it the pain is the maximum decide the treatment strategies for the pain best administration of the of the drug is through mouth so if possible administer the painkiller by mouth then think of, uh, if it's not possible then think of alternate routes it could be rectal or intramuscular uh, avoid intramuscular because uh, it is also a pain giving process you prick the patient with a needle and then after the injection he or she could be feeling pain at the site of injection also so explain the patient the importance of the time of the drug the painkiller you explain the patient that take the doses at the right intervals like if the it's tedious dose uh take it every 8 hourly 6 hourly dose is there then explain the patient it should it should be by clock then start with a small dose if the patient is not bearing the pain with the small dose then start escalating the dose 
and the next dose should be given before the effect of the previous one bears off because otherwise the pain will start and for the breakthrough pain give an extra rescue dose in addition to the regular schedule step 3 is prescribe analgesic use of opioid and non opioid analgesic start with the non opioid group first give one drug from opioid and the other from the non opioid group the exception is if codeine cannot be given use aspirin every 4 hourly combined with the paracetamol every 4 hourly this step next is uh, who step pain relief analgesic ladder here for the mild pain asa is aspirin acetaminophen and said and for the moderate one here we can use mild opioids codeine hydrocodone oxycodone dihydrocodone and for the severe pain we can use morphine hydromorphone methadone like such who analgesic ladder step 1 is non opioid then if the pain is increasing or persisting weak uh, step 2 is weak opioid for mild to moderate pain then step 3 strong opioid for moderate to severe pain these are the uh, partial list of acetaminophen and non steroidal anti inflammatory drug used for the treatment no, here th they are given the drugs and like acetaminophen 650 mg every 4 hourly then aspirin ibuprofen diclofenac sodium these are as per the pain intensity you can give as per the pain of the patient the dose schedule is given these are the codeine phosphate hydrocodone oxycodone tramadol tramadol suppositories are also there in the market as per the pain of the patient we can give so um, morphine sulfate immediate release controlled release tablets and sustained release tablets there are uh, suppositories also oxycodone immediate release oxycodone controlled release tablets hydromorphone all these fentanyl methacodone hydrochloride levophenol tartrate all these medicines with the doses are given in this so nsaids act by inhibiting cyclo oxygenase thereby inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis which are two important mediators of inflammatory process so recent introduction and said therapy include two isoforms of enzyme cyclooxygenase cox1 and cox2 so ketora or triamethamine is available as oral intramuscular and iv formulation the choice of nsaid must be individualized as per the patient need the common adverse effects of this is gi toxicity ulceration and sometimes bleeding also nsaids and opioids have different mechanism of action and logically would have additive analgesia also mod opioids uh, essential component of pharmacotherapy of pain they are classified as weak or strong depending on their relative efficacy in releasing pain morphine sulfate is the prototype opioid agonist and is designated by who as a drug of choice for treatment of severe pain associated with cancer the half life of morphine is approximately 2 hours and it is available both as an oral immediate release preparation and slow release preparation that permit once or twice daily drug regime 
oral administration of opioid is convenient well tolerated inexpensive and a effective therapy most most common adverse effect is the constipation the other effects includes nausea and vomiting some commonly non pharmacological therapies are finding acceptance in pain management are quick distractions imagery hyp uh, hypnosis music therapy special cognitive behavioral interventions massage thermal modalities electrical stimulation if you distract a patient from the topic uh if he is explaining you something and you distract sometimes he feels that pain goes away so these are the general pain uh, relieving methods like hypnosis and music therapy and localized pain for like if a patient is having localized pain you give a massage at a particular place where he is saying my back ache is there or my foot needs massage you just give them a massage and they say we are comfortable with the pain now thermal modalities could be ice and cold uh, applications and as per the need the patient will feel fee pain free electrical stimulations are also there for the local pain special pain uh, med med uh, medication for special pain problems now for burning pain abnormal sensation pains severe shooting pains uh, relatively little pain between pin and needle type of pain pregabalin uh, amitriptyline can be given neuropathic pain so even there are uh, when we give ipt to a patient even then we uh, along with the isoniazide we give pyridoxine so that he doesn't feel the neuropathy because it it is one of the side effect of the drug also so accordingly we should give medicines to relieve the pain for muscle spasm or in the end of the life care of the paralyzed patient diazepam could be given for the herpes zoster patient we give no low dose amitriptyline along with the acyclovir and on the vesicles we can tell the patient to apply gent uh, gentian violet or uh, uh, on the healed vesicles we can always say uh, apply calamine lotion as a soothing effect for the gi pain from colic or intestinal obstruction that is uh, he if the, the intestinal obstruction has been excluded if your she is feeling fe uh, vomiting no stool gas is not passing visible bowel movements are there so codeine could be given for the bone pain or the renal colic dysmenorrhea ibuprofen or nsaids can be given medication for special pain problems with the fear uh, special pain uh, if pain is uh, swelling around tumor severe esophageal ulceration he or she cannot swallow nerve or spinal cord compression persistent severe headache is there so when giving end of life care referral is not desired you can always use steroids under clinical supervision additional methods for controlling the pain emotional support physical methods by massaging ice or heat deep breathing cognitive methods distractions with the radio you can always tell patient like all of us are now having phones they can always switch on to youtube they can see a movie they can see they can listen to a, a spiritual lecture or whatever they feel a prayer 
ट्रेडिशनल प्रैक्टिस दैट आर हेल्पफुल एंड नॉट हेल्प एंड नॉट हार्मफुल ऑल्सो सो इफ दे फील पेन फ्री विद द any prayer or any spiritual guru lecture then let them listen to it symptomatic management with the fear of vomiting the patient avoid eating which will lead to nutritional loss and dehydration so give anti emetic ondestone is the one of the effective medicine which we can give 24 mg tid domstel meter uh, perinom all these are also there uh, sometimes uh, these medicines they should be given uh, under uh, supervision actually uh, tell the patient to eat small frequent meals avoid an empty stomach eat bland foods whenever there is vomiting or nausea is there tell them to eat bland food because they are not getting any taste out of it but nutrition factor should be there that we have to nourish the patient with the food avoid food with a strong or unpleasant odor drink plenty of liquids whether it is a ors whether it's a chaat whether it is a uh, some juice rest and relax after in between the meals avoid lying down immediately after eating avoid coffee and alcohol assess for any signs of dehydration like you can tell the caregiver pinch the skin and see if the patient is dehydrated if patient saying i am full i cannot drink just see from the skin and tell him to uh, see from the tongue also whether it's coated dry or painful mouth ulceration or painful swallowing so in this case if candida is there give fluconazole nystatin miconazole topical anesthetics can be given for pain relief for abscess ulcer uh, crush one 5 mg prednisolone tablet into uh, small powder apply a few grains on the tongue small uh, smelly mouth breath haliotosis from oral cancer or other lesion metron uh, metronidazole 400 mg and uh, chlorhexidine uh, these gargles can be given betadine gargles can be given so for herpes simplex 3 ml nystatin solution plus two tablets of metronidazole one capsule of acyclovir can be given or paint on lesions Re uh, home care remove bits of food stuck in the mouth with cotton wool gauze or a a soft cloth soaked in a salt water take a saline solution and dip it uh, the cloth inside it and remove the tit bits rinse the mouth with the diluted salt water tell him to gargle it out after eating and at bed time mix two tablets of aspirin water rinse the mouth up to four times a day this is the home care soft diet can be given to decrease the discomfort such as uh, rice porridge oat meals khichdi depending on the sickness more textured food and fluids may be swallowed more easily than the fluids so you can mash the food avoid extremely hot and cold spicy foods so commonly administered emetic anti emetics the class and the drugs and the dose schedules are given in this table so the use of newer anti emetic agents has decreased the incidence and severity of nausea vomiting induced by the chemotherapy so the doses are all mentioned in this slide handling of plhiv with hiccups hiccup is uncontrolled diaphragmatic movement it is involuntary movement 
so whenever it comes to a, even a normal person he or she feel irritated so when the patient is there and he is having hiccups so first try to maneuver or control the, there are certain maneuvers by which we can stop hiccups we can stimulate the throat uh, sometimes we say quickly eat two heap teaspoons of sugar drink cold water or crush the ice under your teeth rub a clean cloth inside the mouth the top of the mouth and interrupt the normal breathing some people they pinch the nose and they, we have stopped the feeding uh, breathing and uh, when the breathing is stop again they'll uh, rehold the hold then we can tell them breathe from uh, into a paper bag stop when you feel uncomfortable and sometimes pull the knee, uh, knees to towards the chest and lean forward compression of the chest is there so these are the maneuvers and if not responding to it we can use metoclopramide 10 mg tablet one or two tablets three or four times daily haloperidol can be given uh, one fourth of a tablet to half a tablet one to three times daily if the hiccups are more if patient has a brain tumor or he is having uh, consider anti epileptic anti convulsant drugs also for this patient bed sores the terminally ill patients those who are bed ridden they should be checked for bed sores so if the patient is having pressure at a certain area like the shoulders or the heel of the patient or buttocks check for the sign of infection for smelly tumors or ulcers sprinkle metronidazole powder over it and in to cover and keep the area dry for small sores clean gently with salt salty water and allow it to dry you can apply honey to the bed sores that are not deep and leave the wound open in the air if painful give painkillers such as paracetamol or aspirin regularly for deep or large sores every day cleaning gently with diluted salt water fill the bed sore area with pure honey and cover it with clean light dressing to encourage healing even there are air mattresses available in the market you can use the air mattress for these patients who are having bed sores or terminally ill there are rings uh, can be put under the area where the patient is having bed sores so that the di direct contact is not there with end of life care as how people die uh, lives in the memory of those left behind the terminal phase is defined as the period when day to day deterioration particularly of strength appetite and awareness is occurring so as the condition is deteriorating the patient may be semi conscious conscious at times the relatives will ask whether the patient is going to uh, predict whether is he uh, how long is the patient like predicting the death it could be debatable but we can say uh, that as the disease is advanced the time is near but we uh, we should not disclose it like that so that the patients we can say it's nearing but so it's a debatable question but our aim should be to ensure the patient's comfort holistically peacefully and a dignified death provide psychosocial and spiritual support to the patient active listening and counseling and social emotional support should be there sometimes the religious belief which a patient follows help them in healing like if he wants to listen to some puja or uh, 
हाइम द भजन कीर्तन और एनी ही और शी वॉन्ट्स टू डू सम पूजा और सम दान वॉट एवर ही और शी फील कंफर्टेबल इन डूइंग इट लेट दम डू बी प्रिपेयर टू डिस्कस ऑल द मैटर इफ पेशेंट लाइक Uh, would like to like there are um, some op- openly welcome the issues of the patient whether uh, he is having any doubts or he is having any issues that how my family will move further there are certain points which he wants to discuss with his uncle wife or children so all those matters should be discussed if the patient wants to learn to listen with empathy because the patient is the one who is suffering he is having pain so empathy should be there the we have to put ourselves into that position that how he is suffering understand his reactions to the loss be prepared to absorb some reactions if he is saying some angry words or he or is she is saying some bad words so try to absorb those reactions because they are temporary it is just uh, because of she uh, his situation which is making him doing such things so provide uh, do not improve your uh, impose your own views share religious beliefs with the appropriate person as required empower the family to provide care always counsel the family to provide good care to the patient so that he or she goes comfortably help the family to come to terms with the fact that the patient is leaving them soon so let the family members be around there to see to talk don't tell them just go away you are going to give him infection accordingly sanitize the attendants the caregivers and tell them to talk to the patient deal with their anxieties and fears give information and skills management of end of life care issues is encourage uh, preparing for the death encourage communication within the family discuss worrying issues like custody of the child if the patient is young who will take the custody of the child who will support the family what will be the future school fee if the, he is the only earning member who will provide fee to the child their old quarrels which can be sorted because the patient is going to die maybe they don't they want to patch up the funeral cost tell the patient that he is loved and will be remembered tell about the death if the patient uh, patient wishes and make sure the patient gets help with the feelings of guilt or regret whether he wants to discuss tell him he can openly discuss it with the family connect with the spiritual counselor if or like pastor whatever religion religious belief he follows you can call up pastor as per his wish he can call a pandit he can call anyone or he can follow any spiritual process which ever he wants to presence like approach be present with the compassion outreach visit regularly with home based care someone needs to hold hand if if ever you have seen uh, in an opd someone just fall off you just hold his hand and get him up he will say thank you just by holding you have not applied any uh, medicine to his wounds or anything else but simply just by holding his hand so this critically ill patient if you hold his hand listen to him converse with the patient and his family or there could be a volunteer or ngo worker outreach worker counselor it will help a lot in comfort myers near the end of his life and caring of the patient providing comfort physical contact by light touch holding his hands and 
if the patient is bedridden just that doesn't mean that he doesn't require bathing sponge him daily moisten his lips mouth eyes keep him clean dry and prepare for incontinence of bowel and bladder so that he uh, or she should not be wet only give essential medications like uh, for the pain relief anti diarrheal drugs treat his fever pain control symptoms with medical treatment as needed to relieve suffering including antibiotics wherever required anti fungal drugs whenever required eating less is okay if the patient is saying because he is uh, or she is bedridden they want to eat less it's okay but hydration should be there skin care turn every two hours so that to prevent bed sores and make sure the pain is controlled signs of imminent death De uh, decreased social interaction the patient doesn't want to interact with the people wants to sleep often and sometimes acts confused whether glare at a particular point and they say he or she doesn't want to talk much decreased food intake is there fluid intake is less when you will you will ask they'll say i'm not hungry i'm not thirsty and changes in elimination like reduced urine out urine output bowel movements incontinence could be there the respiratory changes could be irregular circulatory changes cold and grayish or purple extremity sometimes decrease heart rate and blood pressure and we have to explain the signs of the death because uh, doctor could not be there forever but the caregiver the uh, whosoever the family member who is around with that patient he should know the signs of death the explain him when breathing stops completely heart beat or the pulse stop and patient is unresponsive or to shaking shouting if the eyes are fixed in one direction pupils are dilated eyelids they are either open or close the change in the skin tone from white to gray these are the kind of management of end of life care issues in adult and now the palliative care in children it's it's also a worse because uh, in adults we say the patient has lived his life if he or she is old but for the children they are just born new babies it's very painful for the parents to see the children going in front of their eyes and earlier uh, in a uh, hiv the when the uh, pediatric dosage was not enough uh, the children were going but now as the hiv is becoming chronic manageable di disease so our children are living a good life but those who are chronically ill and who need pediatric palliative care it's suffering of the baby or the child and the family who definition of palliative care appropriate for children and their families it is the active total care of child's body mind and spirit and involves giving support to the family it begins when illness is diagnosed and continues regardless of whether child receive treatment directed at the disease health provider must evaluate and elevate a child physical psychosocial and social distress effective palliative care requires broad multidisciplinary approach that includes the family and makes use of unavailable community resources an integrated palliative care consists of outpatient inpatient hospice and home care to maintain the continuum of services care and support 
it is a mutual trust uh, establishing a mutual trust relationship between the child and family with the clinical team and depend on factors unique to children the child development physical emotional cognitive development influences all aspects from understanding the disease drug dosage to communication skills and death care at home most children are cared for at home if the parent is still alive sometimes the grandparents are there with the children to support them and at that stage even the grandparent needs care for himself or herself so it is not possible for the grandparent to bring the child to the hospital for care and take back home so the family unit needs to be given support and to be taught appropriate skills assessing the symptoms in children healthcare provide must provide an environment where children do not fear repercussions from their honest expressions understand there is possibility to reduce pain if present learn to trust healthcare providers and express future feeling and symptoms there are times when uh, our pediatric doctors they uh, who those who are treating hiv patients they counsel the, these children a lot because these children they think the patient they have got the disease from their parents when they become young they come to know that this disease is from their parents but we as a doctor explain them diabetes is also hereditary thalassemia is also hereditary it's not that you have some fault or they have some fault it's a manageable disease we try to explain psychosocial support the psychiatric support whatever possible we try to give these to this these children so that they should come out of this tension from their head palliative care team should pro, uh, provide support during emergencies and health crises and help in the challenges of day to day living symptom and mean pain management relief of symptoms and management of pain need to continue even when the option to stop art may have to be considered prophylaxis is prevention of opportunistic uh, opportunistic infections the ois and cotrimoxazole prophylaxis should be given essential components of palliative care for children these are also pain management symptomatic management psychosocial and spiritual support it is important to note that pain is not often adequately treated in children because the children are unable to express their pain due to the age due to the lack of verbal skill sometimes or some disability so few healthcare professionals are trained and skilled at evaluating children's pain and suffering so therefore pain is left unrecognized ignored and untreated majority of health professionals lack competence in prescribing opioids in children so there is a fear of using opioids for pain management due to common belief that it will lead to addiction so when the child is going how can he or she be addict so tell them to give appropriate dosage of opioids to the children not in a lower dose because they are not getting any benefit out of the lower dose because the pain is not going to go away acknowledgement and support for spiritual pain and conflict and the impact of culture and language is mostly ignored in children correct use of analgesic medicine will relieve pain in most of the children so non pharmacological measures age appropriate active distractions as per the age you actively distract the patient from the so that pain is relieved concentrate on a game or converse a story so that the topic is shifted to something else and his concentration from the point of illness goes to some 
other side swaddling carrying an infant providing warmth breastfeeding feeding stroking rocking massaging if you take a sample from a child if the child is small just tell the mother to breastfeed the child will stop crying this is the small small thing. tell the mother to just give the child his or her personal toy whatever uh, the the patient the, the child will stop crying just give a massage to the child relaxation techniques behavioral modification environmental management include play opportunistic opportunities music scheduled medical and nursing interventions the structured opportunities for sleep and rest nutritional support adequate hydration electrolyte replacement all should be there now as per the symptomatic management hiv infection is associated with a variety of symptoms due to infection itself ois and treatments side effects common symptoms include fever enough uh, cough diarrhea anorexia sore mouth nausea vomiting shortness of breath all are there so major causes of discomfort are poor quality of life during hiv infection many of these symptoms can be prevented treated or controlled with basic medications and therapies non pharmacological methods are important adjuvants can be added to relieve the symptomatic management alleviating symptoms and enables the child to function free from uh, freeing them from the restrictions of the disease as much as possible now the psychosocial and spiritual support the in addition to coping with the life threatening disease and the debilitating fact symptoms hiv infected children and their infected or the uninfected families may have to manage changing family dynamics stigma in the community loss of their own physical functions depression and hopelessness so psychosocial support can be significantly improve the quality of life this needs an interdisciplinary team doctors social workers psychotherapists and counselors who are trained to provide counseling who can address mental health issues they may help them in dealing with the emotional effects as well as the social environment in which they function so now the last is the home based care the home based care in any form is the care given to a sick patient at their own homes instead of the hospital home based care covers physical emotional spiritual and social aspects it is the place where the patient feels comfortable the care is provided by the family members the peer counselors the outreach workers it is uh, here the symptom and pain management is done clinic hospital referral for routine visits only treat support for adherence and the side effects nutritional support could be given emotional support spiritual supports social services uh like income generation child supporting food support future planning for family preparing and identifying a guardian for the child end of life care pain management funeral grieving support for the family like now the caregivers should be educated for this information of basic hiv personal and environmental hygiene prevention of infections and injuries to themselves also management of infections at home and necessary information on essential nutritional needs and additional energy requirements in addition they should be equipped with information about medicines to be taken by the patient and their possible side effects 
and whom to call whenever there is any need symptomatic management at home caregiver with the information and knowledge provided will be able to address and manage symptoms like cough fever hiccups weight loss nausea vomiting mouth ulcers pain or swelling during mouth dry mouth constipation and incontinence of stool and urine they should be elevate able to elevate anxiety and trouble sleeping the caregiver should be in touch with the art centers to seek advice on the suspected side effects of the arv drugs so in the intervention uh, they should make a health care kit sterile gauze clean cotton soap caesar calamine lotion bleaching powder petroleum jelly vaseline like this is a home care kit which they can make and keep aside to the patient whenever required they can use it this gentian violet crystals potassium kmno4 crystals betadine rubber gloves towels now the challenge is faced by the caregiver the stress the anxiety over a period caregivers are uh, subjected to physical and emotional stress burden of providing care they are giving care to the patient and they know this patient is going to die so even then they are giving their utmost care taking care of the household work and there is a uh, if the earning member is going the lack of income is also there so there is a intense um kind of uh, sick uh, atmosphere at the uh, patient's place so the caregiver should all uh, he or she can also fall ill because of the care they are giving to the patient so symptoms of caregiver stress stress in the caregiver can be identified by surfacing emotional symptoms they can feel like crying they their anxiety is their irritability is with the uh, caregiver anger feelings and they could be uh, they feel exhausted and lack of interest in their activities because they are seeing it is uh, like day to day care and they see an endless hope of that patient so they are feeling something is going away from them so they also need support so to encourage them to talk to their friends relative participate in some outdoor activities support groups hobbies make them eat well take care of their own health train them to become peer educator positive attitude train identify additional caregiver who can also support them so thank you all for the patience listening this topic was very deep i hope i had made this topic thank you so much ma'am for facilitating this session thank you so, so much thank questions? you all for patience listening yeah any questions from the participants we can take them up you can either put it in the chat box or you can unmute your mic yeah any questions about improving quality of life beyond clinical treatment or oh, ma'am i don't think there are any questions thank you so much for facilitating this session uh, thank you please run the feedback poll ma'am sure
the feedback poll is now visible on your screen. All the participants are requested to please take up the feedback poll. There are four questions in all. Please scroll through all the four questions and answer them. Requesting all the participants to please take the feedback poll. Thank you to the, all the participants for patient listening. Ma'am, we'll conclude the session now. Thank you.